says, I'd like to know the best way to break into cybersecurity from the help desk. I have extensive experience from the help desk in a large environment of approximately 18,000 plus users. I am in school for cybersecurity and will be obtaining my SEC plus within the next few months. What route should I take since I'm still in school and I'm not in a feeder role? Uh, and again, we got variants mm -hmm. on this. Can a seasoned lawyer become a cybersecurity expert? Uh, what if someone is working as a network engineer and wants to switch to cybersecurity? That's from Chitali. Um, another person says, I'm 36 and transitioning from 15 year career in restaurant management, uh, but graduating in November, 2021, but has no idea how to get any hands-on experience. So I feel like these are all sort of speaking to the same thing. People, and we've been talking about this, it sounds like for the, for the whole episode here, but people feel like it's very hard to see how they can transfer the skills they have now in their minds to a cybersecurity role. So, uh, do we want to, uh, sort of assuage some minds here? Gene, you want to start? No, because this is, it's so asinine, the problem we have. And, you know, for all those, every one of you who are trying to move from transition from your IT job, like the help desk and network, you have a, such a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you are, there's nothing you need to do because you already know this stuff. You're already working with the security team. Mm -hmm. If the security team is too egotistical and not give you that opportunity, time to find another job in the cyber. Because I can yep. tell you right now, I hire more people from IT in the past than bring it from the outside. Yeah. Because they have the tribal knowledge and intrinsic knowledge of what IT is in order to secure it better. My personal opinion. Help desk people are the best. Why? Because they help, they have helped every problems that people have solved. Yep. They have the relationship with the people. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to transition within your own security team because it's a you know fancy thing that you want to go through but if you're they're not even giving you that opportunity for internal transfer move on it's completely useless find another company and i guarantee you people want those skill set who are yeah. right in my opinion um for the people who are transitioning from a different job like rest i mean i know you mentioned restaurant manager Perfect opportunity. You could be a channel manager, partner manager for cybersecurity company. You have the experience in having the, the gift of gap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, I, and I, I think there's 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 that fear that I have all this experience in this one thing, but you know, they almost feel like I have to sort of push it away and learn a new thing. But it's 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 yeah. like taking taking like Vic said about taking inventory. What do you have? What yeah. do you have at hand? And how does this translate to something that people in cybersecurity would want? Is that, am I representing that correctly, Vic? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vic. Okay. Every 100, it's, the, the, you know, we use that scale of one to 10, right? I mean, ratio, a one to, a hundred to one ratio when it comes to budget versus staffing and IT versus security. And in just the same, security stack is like this big of how many software we actually manage. Sure, it's small people, <laughs> but here's IT. <laughs> so if you're in IT, you are way more advanced and ahead than what you would you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got started as a network engineer. Um, I had no clue. I mean, I had gone to school and I'd gotten my degree and all that, but I had never touched any of it. Um, yeah. And then I got that first job, and then I saw the security side of things, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna work to get to that point. And so I'd made it a point to go and study Security Plus because I was working for the government at the time. Um, and you had to have it. This was way back in the day. And then I was like, I got to do CCNA security because I was working on S Cisco equipment. Right. And I wanted to learn more about securing Cisco equipment. Um, so if you, if one, if you haven't asked how to move around in your company, you need to. And then if they're not giving you that opportunity, then just say, kick rocks. Bye. Um, but two, what are you doing outside of work? What kind of things are you doing outside of work? Are you building a home lab? Are you participating in cyber competitions? Um, are you mentoring cyber patriots? Because you're learning stuff by when you have to do that, right? Um, cyber competitions, and I just spoke on this yesterday, cyber competitions are really, really valuable because you're learning in some instances, you're learning about real world issues and how to fix them and how to navigate those issues. So even if you're from the restaurant side, if you wanna get into the hands-on or just wanna learn about cyber in general, participating in competitions is a really good way. Uh, ctftime.org is a great site that lists out tons of competitions across the world. They have write-ups 
for um, what folks that have solved those problems have done. And you can start looking at that stuff to kind of get some more experience and then put it on your resume. You know, yeah. I participated in NCL or CCDC or whatever competition it was. And if you placed, that's even better. But that's also a good way to have recruiters look at you because all of the companies that sponsor are looking at, okay, who's done what in this competition? Let's talk to these people. Let's do X, Y, Z. So that's another another way to get in. So, yeah, and 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 you know, just just like like I said before, pivot, pause, pivot. Mm -hmm. slow down, figure out who you are, take inventory of what you got, you know, and the the, the other V would be value. Um, what value do you have that you can present with an organization? And and to the point, if you're sitting there at the help desk, the value you have is trend analysis. Mm -hmm. So while you're sitting there at that at that help desk and you say 25% of your calls are for password reset, now you can go to the identity and access management team and say, hey, look, we're having an issue here. It's a trend with regards to how people's accounts have been provisioned. Either, you know, hopefully you've moved past uh, just the username and password, you've gone to multi-factor authentication. <laughs> but, but if you're still in that mode, now you have a use case to where you can go into the identity access management team and says, you know, what will it take for us to move off of username and password to get to a multi-factor solution I'm on the help desk. How can I help you? Yeah. Proactive. Okay. You know, have vision of your value. And Thanks then, you know, you. organize yourself, take action. And 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 to Mary's and Jean's point, if they don't see your value, know your value. Somebody else will will, will compensate you for it. Exactly. New episodes of the Cyberwork Podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things Cyberwork.